Hi, I'm Chuck Harper, director of the Cross Nations. Today I get to talk to you about power, one of my favorite topics. When I say power, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Maybe it's one of those beautiful souped up 1970 Corvettes, or maybe some of you it's the atomic bomb, or maybe you're just looking around for an outlet to charge your phone, or some people might be thinking of the Olympics. Or you might think of a hurricane or being lost in the woods during a thunderstorm. You can even go to Panda Express and get power greens. Well, maybe your idea is, is like a kryptonite. What's your favorite Avenger? Most fans will say Tony Stark or Steve Rogers. Thor, maybe. Cap was the overall favorite for most people, and I know the ladies usually say God of Thunder or Thor. You know, there's no question, we all do love power. I always wanted to be a, well, at least to have a more bigger and more powerful chainsaw. I also wanted to be a linebacker for the Denver Broncos, don't you think? Well, today I wish I had the power to invent the cure for COVID-19. For some people, power is money and lots of it. Maybe your power dream is to become the next president. But did you know the Bible has a lot to say about power? Yes, we all know about creation. Day one, let there be light, bam. Then there's the second and third day, dry land, seas, plants and trees, bam, power. Fourth day, sun, moon and stars, they were created, bam. The fifth day, one of my favorites, creatures for red lobster, crabs and clams and creatures that fly like fried chicken. Bam, day six, another one of my favorites, steak and barbecue ribs come into play. And then out of dust comes man, and then woman from a rib. Bam, that's power. But you know, God has a lot more to say about power than that. The Bible is full of stories about power. In fact, Google says the Bible mentions power 345 times. It could even be the title, God's Power Book. There's creation. Yes, seven days, There's then there's plagues. Then there comes along this little guy named David, killing the big bad giant with only five stones. Then people that came back from the dead and miracles, water to wine and sardines for a piece of, uh, well, those five loaves and two small fish. Jesus dying on the cross and then coming back from the dead. And now, here we are today. Where's God in the middle of all this mess around us? drive through graduations? Really? People living in fear? All these masks and gloves and craziness? Where's God in the power of code of COVID-19? World poverty, everybody hating each other, politics, all this stuff. The world is so full of hate and crime and correct corruption. Does God's power even exist anymore? Where's this power with so much disease, so many problems? Even our planet becoming self-destructing. But you know, I want to submit to you today, God's power still exists. Yes, God's power still exists today. 2020. Jesus even said, Greater things will you do than I. What? Walking on water? Blind people seeing? Beggars being given hope? If God's power is still active today and real, what relevance is it today? You know, during this time when the world's such a mess, and I think it is, when, when we all need to know what we can do about it, we can plug into the power that Jesus offers us. How can we know this power? Is it really real? Is it something we can know today? Well, I think it is. And I've got just a couple of tips for you to know how that power can truly become real. First of all, we have to reject the lies that the enemy wants to tell you. He'll whisper on your ear, sitting on your shoulder, and he'll say, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're just from the res or from the wrong family or blah, 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 blah. I want you to ignore those lies because they're straight from hell. Second way we can know is being because we can be plugged into the source. You know, there's an operating system that God made. He designed it. He designed it for us to work under. But it's more than a system. It's really everything God has in mind for you. It's a system that God planned, and it's a divine drama or an adventure and a purpose. It's all about power. And we're downloaded into this operating system. And in fact, it's, uh, it's working all around us. And if we don't use it, we're toast. His system is really the only one that works. 
And if it doesn't, we need to reboot, upgrade, and get with the program. But we have to swap our current system for one that's truly His. How does that happen? Well, first of all, we have to have a relationship with Him. It's knowing all about Him. He's given us the tools. Let's use our, our cell phone for an example. You know, a working phone needs to have an account with the carrier. For me, it's Verizon. You know, some of us uh, have to be stuck with whatever. But it all we all need a system. So if you're like a phone and you need an account with a carrier, that's like our relationship with Jesus. That's really what High Life here is all about. The leaders here know Jesus. They have a relationship with him. Jesus is not just a fairy tale or a concept out there or la la la, but Jesus is the same one that silenced that storm. He got up from taking a nap in the middle of that huge power storm and he just simply said, peace, be still. He's the guy who healed the sick people, the guy who had a virus, and Jesus did die. But he came back to life, and he was lifted off into heaven, and he said, one day soon I'm gonna return. But he left his Holy Spirit here to give us power to live. Yes, power for life. It's not a great speaking these weird kind of sounds kind of way, but that we can have a true relationship with him. And we know that when we when we're afraid of all these things around us, we can read about him, pray to him, and, and know that he's truly with us. The Bible even says his mercy is new to us every day. We don't wake up one day and say, oh shucks, his mercy has run out. Or Jesus doesn't put on his mask and, hey angels, you better run out and get some hand sanitizer. I'm not sure about this virus. We can know that he's in control. And we can see our prayers answered. We need to get plugged in and often charged. We can learn a lot from our cell phones. We have to charge the phone, don't we? I don't know about yours, but my phone needs plugged in at least twice a day. Sometimes once, but usually twice. You know, 20% left, 10% left. Charge your, soon, charge your phone soon, buddy, or you're toast. You're gonna have a rotten good for nothing day because your phone is off. We need to plug into the source. We need to plug into the power. Same way with our relationship with God. We've got to be plugged in. And with our spiritual life, that's being plugged into God's Word. Simply reading it, studying on it, studying it, meditating in it. Meditate simply means just reading it, thinking about it, and wondering, what does that mean? How does that apply to my life? We also need to know and be where the signal works best. We need to be within reach of others. Sometimes it's church, sometimes it's youth group, sometimes it's just hanging out with the right people. We have to be in our zone. We have to be where the power bars are just right. I know the power is still real today. Yes, I do. But we also need to know, this is number three, that we've gotta be used for what our power is intended for. We've gotta use our phone to do what it's for. It can't be used for washing dishes or chopping wood or stuff like that. We have to use it for what it's intended for and that's when God's power becomes real. Your phone isn't any good if you don't have signal or internet. Nobody knows that better than us here on the Navajo Nation where our phone coverage is so limited. God has a plan for us. We never run out of minutes. It's always here for us. The power is what we need for that plan. We need to know it's for what he designed it to be, and that's for a purpose for His glory. And we've got to be on mission for Him. That's what the power is for. It's not for our own use, but it's for serving others and doing things for others and being on mission and helping each other, keeping others' needs before our own. There's an old saying, you can't steer a parked car. You can't use a dead phone. So God wants us to use the power. He's got power for us. Clean out the stuff that's in our lives that keeps us from getting our phones to work right. And we can experience the power God wants for us. I know it's real, I know it's for you and me. There's a verse, you know, even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation and your mighty acts for all who are to come. God has power for you. He's got that power. It's real. It's the same power that he created. It's the same power that can transform lives. It's the same power that's real for you right now.